Throughout the 1980s, most PCs relied on a keyboard as the primary input device. The launch of Microsoft Windows in 1985 helped usher in a more graphical era for computing, and by the end of the decade, having a mouse was becoming a necessity. But what if you didn't have the space for one? Windows brought a graphical user interface to a large number of computer owners who had previously been interacting with their PCs through a command line interface. Microsoft itself sold mice for moving the cursor around the screen along with a plethora of other manufacturers. The vast majority of desktop users found these to be just fine, but for a select few, they weren't suitable. Trackballs were a popular alternative, but for those who didn't have much space on their desks, they still generally had a decent-sized footprint. Some also could never quite get used to the concept of rolling the ball to move the cursor. Peripheral maker Suncom saw these limitations as an opportunity, and in 1987, launched the iController. Simply put, it was a miniature joystick, something Suncom also had experience manufacturing. It connected through your PC's serial port and came with drivers on both 3.5 and 5.25 inch floppies to accommodate a variety of computers. It featured three mouse buttons instead of the usual two, and a button let you rotate through four different tracking speeds. Unfortunately, for the most part, the iController was a solution in search of a problem and wasn't all that great of a solution to begin with. Suncom advertised it as being a space-saving mouse alternative, and they weren't kidding. This thing is actually tiny. That sounds like a benefit, but in practice, it was a detriment, as it was too small to use comfortably. The tracking was especially frustrating, as it was a completely different concept to how mice and trackballs worked. With those, it's a one-to-one -one relationship with the cursor. Stop moving the mouse or trackball, and the pointer stops too. But with the eye controller, you pushed the joystick in the direction you wanted the cursor to move, and it would only stop if you let go. This made it very easy to overshoot what you were aiming for, and even at the different tracking speeds, precision movements were difficult because of the extremely short travel of the joystick. The buttons were uncomfortably small, and to make matters worse, had a very mushy, rubbery feel instead of the solid click that mouse users were used to. Suncom added a customizable button to the top of the joystick, but it was even tinier and could only be set to act as one of the three mouse buttons. Perhaps the worst thing about the eye controller's size was that it was simply unusable on its own. You had to secure it to something, and Suncom advised sticking it to the side of one's keyboard using Velcro, which further emphasized how comically small it was. Reviewers were not kind, complaining about the absurdity of trying to use it without attaching it to something, and even if you did, how wobbly it ended up being because of that Velcro. So it may seem like the eye controller was a pretty stupid product, but it did have a viable use case. Laptops. A lot of machines, even into the early 90s, didn't ship with any sort of built-in pointing device, and it wasn't exactly practical to use a mouse with a notebook on your lap or airplane tray table. There was a robust market for clip-on trackballs, to which Suncom's offering was a much stronger competitor. The company even sold a laptop-specific version that came with a shorter, coiled cable to keep things more tidy and Suncom released several other versions as well, trying to get the most from its development costs. Models specific to not just PCs, but also machines like the Apple II, Commodore, and Amiga series. And though it wasn't a hot seller, the company kept trying to move it, with the iController continuing to appear in reviews into the early 90s. At a price of $100, though, it was just too expensive, given how much better its competitors worked. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Please consider supporting my work over on Patreon, and as always, thanks for watching.